So if you clicked on this video, I assume you want to learn Next.js, but uh, you want to know if you need to learn React before that or how much of React you need to learn before starting to learn Next. So the first thing I want to say is that you actually don't need to learn React to start learning Next.js, especially because people mistakenly think that React and Next.js are alternatives from each other when they are really not. I would say Next is more of an alternative to something like Create React App or something like Vite. Um, because it is more of a way to create your React application um, rather than um, something that is different from uh, an app that is made with React. Actually, Next uses React as its basis um, and it changes some of the things and adds more features to it. So for that reason, it is not necessary to learn React before Next. In fact, I actually believe it's easier to learn Next.js compared to learning React because it has some very beginner friendly features, such as the fact that you can really easily add routes to it compared to React. But all of this doesn't mean that you can't use some knowledge you gained from um, building React applications using something like Create React App to actually learn Next in an easier way. And at the end of the video, I'll even let you all on an advice for the future. But for now, here is everything you might wanna know before learning Next.js. This video is sponsored by themeselection.com. If you're looking to get any admin template for your projects or your business, you should check them out. For example, they have an amazing Material UI React Next.js admin template for anyone who is looking to build a really nice project without having to spend a lot of time building the main core features. The templates are all made with the newest versions of their own technologies. For example, this one I just said is made with the latest version of React and um, Material UI. And it also includes a lot of the best practices that are already set for React, such as building your templates using hooks and functional components. Building a production ready and functional Next.js app is really hard. So um, using a template like the ones they provide can really save a lot of your time. It is also really easy to customize your own template. So if you're interested, they're currently releasing a bundle which will give you eight pre-made templates with a lot of pre-made components that you can use inside of any of your projects. And if you decide to use the code that is on the description, you will get 15% off if you're one of the first 100 people who click the link in the description. Trust me when I say they have a really, really nice product. And if you're actually building something that will be used by a lot of people, you really don't want to play around with it. You might want to get something like this to help you save a lot of time. Again, thank you Theme Selection for sponsoring and let's get into the video. So the first thing that you really need to understand before starting to learn next is exactly how does a page load in React. So when you load a page um, using client side rendering in React, normally what would happen is the following. Imagine an example where you have a page where you wanna um, fetch data for, for example, the list of friends from a user, and then just display that data in that page. So if you're using something like Create React App to create your React application and you're uh, loading and rendering everything from the client, what would happen is the following. First, um, you would make a request, the page would make a request to receive the HTML and it would receive an HTML completely empty. Basically, it will be just an empty HTML with a single div with an idea of root and nothing inside of it. And then it will also have some scripts um, fetching all the J JavaScript that we have for our application. You can even check this by actually going to any website that was created using Create React App and just trying to download the source code. You'll look at it and you'll be confused because none of the UI elements will actually be in the HTML because they don't exist. Um, initially, the HTML is completely empty. So the source code obviously won't have any of that. What React does is it then loads the JavaScript from the JavaScript script tag and further fetches the list of users. So only after the HTML is received by the browser, um, they actually downloads all the JavaScript and fetches the data and puts it inside of the inside of the actual DOM. So that's the thing. You only get the correct UI elements after the data is fully fetched and the initial HTML doesn't include that stuff. And that's that's a big problem, to be honest. So for example, when a, a search engine like Google tries to rank their websites based on keywords, what they do is they download the source code and uses that as uh, basically what keywords that website contains. But the thing is, a normal Create React App website won't have anything inside of their HTML, inside of their source code initially, so they will rank 
poorly on SEO standards and Google will basically not show the page because it doesn't know what the page is about because there's no keywords, there's nothing. Um, it's just a mess. There's a lot more to it. But the thing the main issue in this case is that you're rendering everything in the client. And um, there is a solution to it, which is what next allows us to do. Because next actually has a lot of flexibility. Um, it not only allows you to render pages statically through the client, but it also allows you to render your pages from the server, which is also known as server side rendering. So if you have a page that is not static, such as the one then from the example, and it's not static, because it constantly changes the, the values of it depending on the data it fetches, right? You can use a method from Next.js called get server side props, which allows us to run react on the server and send back the fully loaded HTML before the JavaScript is uh, loaded and synced, which means that um, we will have everything loaded into our source code before um, actually trying to sync everything with JavaScript, which is good because it will rank higher, it'll have good SEO, and everything is already there. A good example should be showing in the screen right now of how this would work and how what's the difference is, but um, it allows for this, which is amazing. This is actually one of the main reasons people choose to use Next.js, because one of the main issues with React is now solved. And there's basically no downside to it. So honestly, I don't see the point of using normal like React, create React app instead of Next.js when it's hard to find the negatives um, in this case. And it is important to understand this before you're learning Next because there will be no purpose when learning Next if you don't understand why you're learning it. So understanding why you're learning it is fundamental and crucial for you to actually have the discipline and motivation to learn this framework. That being said, if you are a developer who um, already knows a little bit of React, but isn't really like good at it, you just know how to make simple websites with it, and you already want to transition to next, I would say to stop and really think what you're doing, because it is really easy for any kind of web developer to really confuse how much they actually know, right? Not actually know enough and think they know more than they actually do. I actually did this because uh, on while I was learning React six months in, I thought I was already pretty good with React. But at that point, I didn't know some of the most important features of React, like when and where to use uh, some of the hooks, like use memo and use callback. I didn't know that, and I considered myself um, intermediate to advanced uh, in React, which is crazy to me now, because there's always a lot more to learn. So you have to understand where you are, and you can't be transitioning from one framework to the other um, and just learning the basics, because then you'll just know the basics for everything and not be good at anything. So I'm saying this because uh, I know there are a lot of developers out there that do this, and I did this too. So being able to tell yourself and and, and kind of uh, hold yourself accountable in that case is really important as well. So what's the point of this video, you might ask, because I just told you that you really don't need to know React before learning Next.js. And again, when I say React, I mean um, the create React app ecosystem instead of React as a whole because Next.js uses React, right? But the point is the following. Technology will evolve as we go, right? Um, I started learning React three years after it got released, I believe. And um, now I already see trends showing that uh, React, normal React, the React that I've always known might not be the future. Now, does that mean that we should stop learning React and keep switching to the new thing that is arriving all the time? No, that doesn't mean that, especially because imagine if you're a big company with a huge code base, you're not gonna like the resources for you to switch from one framework to the other just because of minor improvements is crazy. So like React, normal React will still be used a lot um, in reality, right? But one of the things I preach the most about for people who are trying to really get really good at web dev is to obsess over the community and obsess over um, the learning path. Because if you just want to be a programmer who learns whatever you're learning, does your job, get paid, and that's fine, that's fine. A lot of us do this too. But if you really want to get be the best at what you're doing, you really have to obsess over it and understanding and keeping up to date with the new technologies and exactly why they are better or worse than what we have right now is really important. And I feel like if you are a React developer and you don't know Next yet, that's definitely something you should get your hands on because maybe that's not the future in the next one year or two years, 
but trust me, something either next or a variation of next will definitely be way more popular in the future because we're already seeing it. If you look at the Google trends for React.js and Next.js, Next.js is already destroying React, which is crazy, right? So that's my rant for today. And I really appreciate it if you guys liked this video. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and comment down below. Uh, let me know what you want to see next. Again, thank you so much for theme selection for sponsoring this video. Um, you guys definitely keep the channel rolling. I really appreciate it if you guys could check them out. They are really nice. And yeah, that's, that's basically it. I really appreciate you guys watching this video and I see you guys next time.